All right, guys, so it's part two of our uh, LNF Ecotech build for the Goblin. I finally got word that after a month, stage two is, is finally getting shipped out. Uh, I, I hope. I, I, really, I really do hope it's actually getting shipped this time. But in uh, part one, I'll put the link up wherever uh, YouTube puts links. Uh, we put the bottom in together, uh, crank seals, uh, bearings, put the pistons in, new piston rings, all that. Now we're ready to move on to the most exciting part here. I'm just kidding. This is probably the probably one of the easiest parts, but not very exciting. Depends on what you consider uh, exciting. So we're going to put the head on our LNF here. We've got a new head gasket we're going to go ahead and uh, throw on. Now, in uh, part one, I mentioned that it looked like this motor had been uh, taken apart before. I noticed uh, some evidence of, uh, let's just say, somebody kind of poking around in here. And um, yeah, it was kind of uh, reassured when I flipped this over and found remnants of uh, essentially gasket, gasket goo, gasket sealer, black gasket maker. Um, we don't use gasket maker on this motor, especially these gaskets. They go on right as they're set. Um, but yeah, somebody had taken the head apart before. So I'm thinking maybe that was our issue. We're gonna actually put it together the right way, the way it's supposed to be done. We got the right gasket directly from the old General Motors. I'm a big GM parts guy. GM parts guy on, on certain things, if it's um, especially electrical. Didn't hot tank this. Didn't really do any of that. Uh, got it cleaned up with a razor blade and some brake parts cleaner, and it's going on as is. The bottom end is clean. We'll take care of the top end when we're ready to drop the cams in and all that stuff there. So this is gonna be pretty straightforward too for uh, pretty much any of the Ecotechs. The two liters, 2.2, uh, 2.4s, probably some of the junk new Ecotechs that GM builds, but uh, yeah, make sure, seriously, new head bolts. All right. So I think I told you guys, when I initially set out to do this build here for the Goblin, kind of wanted to do a built up LNF. Um, but after doing some thinking, doing some talking, I'm just gonna send it how it is right now. And then uh, later on, you can kind of look at upgrading it. So gasket here really only goes on one way. Can't really, uh, can't really screw it up. If you're confused on how it needs to go on, the best way to look is right here, you can see a cooling orifice right here. And it only covers that one hole right in there. Make sure it sits nice and flat as well. And you wanna make sure your, your head and your mating surface is nice and clean. Uh, I did go through with a razor blade here. It's pretty, uh, about as clean as it's gonna get unless it goes into a uh, soak tank. Don't force this thing on either. All right, should lock right down in place. All righty, so now that the, well, now that our head's on, I keep wanting to say heads, you know, cause I'm thinking like heads, but now that we have our head on, singular, um, probably something you want to do before you actually put your head on. Make sure this key sticking straight up, that's going to be top dead center. All set there. I think we're pretty good. Let's see, we uh, I have to look at the book. I think it's 122 foot pounds and 155. Oh, we almost forgot our, our secret hidden bolts right in there. Most people forget about those. Very, very easy to forget. You know, I remember talking to a guy recently who had a, uh, an Ecotech on a, uh, it was a Chevy Traverse. And uh, yeah, I think he didn't follow the uh, torque procedure and warped the head and ended up throwing the car away. 
So we're going 22 foot pounds. All right, so now we have 155 degrees. Come on. There we go. Come on. So the head bolts are in, we didn't break any. Um, thank goodness here. Now, on that timing set here on the, uh, on the key, you know, I didn't even think about it. If you didn't put your spark plugs in, I mean, yeah, you could still, you could still set it. Duh, you wouldn't have any, you wouldn't have any compression without plugs in it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we have four more right in there. And this is a special, special type, but these don't have any type of degree turn. It's just 22 pounds. All right, let's spin this sucker around. Now it's like super heavy. Hopefully our head's on tight. Man, this thing is still dirty, no matter how much I cleaned it. All right. All right, so we're all flipped up, ready to go. I know I'm contradicting myself here, but um, I think we're gonna go ahead and put the oil pan on. Kind of want to make some room on my little table here. It's getting, uh, it's getting a little too dirty. You might have to call 1-800-HOARDERS over here. So this one doesn't actually come with a, um, a gasket. Imagine that, which basically could be all right. We're going to just use some canned cheese here to uh, do that one. Hopefully we, imagine that. It's, uh, it's dried up, even though we closed it. Gotta love it. Oops, got it in the hole. Now one of the things I forgot to mention on this oil pan, and I know I said this in part one and totally forgot about it, but there's a huge, well, they're, they're really heavily uh, marketing baffled oil tanks, well, oil pans for this motor, and the chamber system that's in these is, is already baffled. So it's kind of a waste of money, if you ask me. And the reason that there's a, a huge market, a lot of guys are, are autocrossing these, and, uh, well, you know, G-forces cause the oil to slide to one side of the tank, and then, therefore the tank can't pick it up. But if you look at the inside of this, the actual pickup is baffled. So you're not getting free sloshing oil like you would on a typical motor. Now the oil pan in these is gonna be slightly different than the other Ecotechs, but not much of a difference. to do this. This is crazy. The pick graph is f***ing upside down. Upside down and backwards. Come on, hold. Hold. There we go. The oil pan fiasco is out of the way. I'm going to chalk that one up to maybe user error slash like orientation of the photo. Um, but I got everything set up over here. We're ready to drop the rest of the top end in. Um, I was looking at the cam. Uh, it's a little aggressive on the markings here. 
double check that, make sure everything looks all right. Um, almost thought about replacing rollers. We're not gonna do that. Those are uh, super expensive. And these are actually still in really, really good condition. The car only had 30,000 miles on. Now, I'm still leaning to the fact that maybe this thing was taken apart. Um, but I don't see really any damage. Uh, just typical wear and tear on these here. Now, it is cheaper to buy, you're gonna spend like 180 bucks for this here. Um, it's actually cheaper to just buy a uh, GM assembled head, brand new. You can find them as low as 300, and I've seen them as high as 700. Nothing special. Uh, some of the lower end assembled ones are missing like the cams, but you can pick up a set of OEM cams uh, pretty cheap. You can go the comp cam route. Comp cam route's about, well, 669 last time I checked, or there's a particular company out there that starts with a Z that they make their own. Well, I don't think they're making their own. I think they're making dyes. Well, I think they're buying Chinese dyes and then milling them down. They ain't making their own cams. But uh, got these marinating. No reason to actually really soak these. I just want them wet for when we drop in that I'm not having to grease each and every single one. So we'll clean out the head just a little more, get a good wipe down up here. And then, ready for the grand, well, ready to get rid of the hard part. I would say this is probably about the hard part. And then we have an entire pile of junk over here that we got to go through and, and get all this assembled down. All right, in you go. So this one has a five o'clock orientation. You can see the notch right there. Get our caps on here. We're only going to put these in place just for now to hold, and we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to that. It's very, very, very hard to see, but you can see these actually have an arrow that'll focus and a number on there. So number two, and the last one here is going to be for our high pressure fuel pump. We'll do that later. Man, I almost forgot one step here. Got to make sure these are set at 12 o'clock. Right at the slit. Got to find it though. All right, so it's starting to starting to look like a motor here. Still got to do timing chain, uh, water pump. Got ourselves a new water pump over on the uh, table over there. Uh, intake manifold. Exhaust manifold, got to put the turbo on, a few other little things on that. I'm going to wait to tighten up the caps here on the cams. I have a few other little small things that I need to do. I also have two torque to yield bolts that I bought new that I need to locate first so we can put our sprockets on there. So there's still a lot of stuff to do. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Hopefully, it, hell, hopefully it runs. We won't know until we actually get it bolted in there. Can't really run these on a test stand they're kind of uh kind of awkward all right guys so that does it for uh what are we on well yeah part two of our build here still have a few other little things we're gonna gonna do here heard youtube's running a special on channel subscriptions uh this week only so uh might want to hit that like and subscribe definitely helps out the channel there kind of gets it on the uh the algorithm there that youtube has you know unfortunately youtube's algorithm only pushes like the same four channels uh on YouTube, especially within this niche here. So if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. I do read the comment section. So um, in the meantime, I'll be looking over the motor, making sure everything is done. Hopefully we've done everything correctly. We'll find out when it comes time to power it on here. So if you guys have any questions, let me know.